Today on America's Test Kitchen, Dan makes Julia the ultimate chicken bouillabaisse. Jack challenges Bridget to a tasting of cinnamon. And Bridget and Julia share the secrets to Greek chicken and rice soup. It's all coming up right here on America's Test Kitchen. Bouillabaisse is a famous dish from the French city of Marseille. Traditional recipes call for an array of Mediterranean seafood along with other ingredients, including fennel, orange, and saffron. But there are lots of variations, and a popular one, touted by Julia Child herself, involves swapping chicken for the seafood to make bouillabaisse du poulet, or chicken bouillabaisse. And that's what Dan's going to show us how to make today. So it's really nice to switch in the chicken for the fish because it's so much easier to get, it's a lot less expensive, but it does present its own challenges. So we're going to address some of those today and make one of the best braises on the planet. Really. I'm in. So we're going to start with a whole chicken. What's nice about working with a whole chicken is you get a mix of different parts, and because they're all from the same bird, they cook at about the same rate because they're the same size. Right. You don't have massive breasts from one chicken and smaller legs from another. I'm going to start by making a nice separation here between the drumstick and the breast. What a lot of people tend to do is they cut very close to the breast here, and then the skin peels up and you have breast that's unprotected. So what I like to do is cut closer to over here. So I'll pull it back and I'll make my cut this way. So I leave a little extra, the breast is going to be nice and covered. So what I'm going to do is just cut through here, and then you can see this nice line of fat right here. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows you where you should be cutting. So you're going to go right along there. And you're going to start going through the ribs, which are really small bones, so they're very easy to cut through. And then when you get to about here, I like to just do a little break like this, open it up, and then you can go right in with your knife the rest of the way. Now, Dan is very good with a knife, but if you're doing this for the first time and you want something that's a little easier to work with, try using a pair of scissors. Okay, and then once that's back, very easy to get that last little bit. So now you've also got a nice view of what's going on inside here, right? So I like to just hold down the backbone with my knife here, you can pop that and see that come out. So I like to peel back, and that oyster comes out nice and easily that way. So that's the oyster right there. Mm, that tender piece of dark meat. It's so good, it's right? It's kind of like the number one piece of meat on the chicken. Absolutely. So I'm just going to finish up our legs while we're here. And there's another line of fat here. The chicken's just made for breaking down, right? <laughs> it's got all these nice lines for you. So you want to go right about there, and that's going to be a nice separation between the bone. Now we're just going to deal with our breast. So we're going to go through this bone right here. So I like to make a cut, and then kind of center it on the knife right there, and then just give it a good whack. And you can hear it start to break. And then we're slicing the rest of the way through, right through that skin. And then the final thing is these wings are delicious, but they're going to cook a little funny in here, so we're going to take them off for this. And that's just going in with your knife. Finally, these breasts are really large compared to these guys, so we're going to cut them in half crosswise. And you're doing two different things here. You're sawing through the meat, and then you got to crunch through that bone. All right, there are nice well pieces. Well done. Thank you. So now we're going to heat two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil here in this Dutch oven until it just starts smoking. In the meantime, I'm just going to pat these guys dry before we season. Nice dusting of salt and pepper. We're just starting to smoke on our oil. Mm -hmm. We're going in skin side down. We're going to render a lot of fat from that. And we're going to do a lot of things throughout this recipe to make sure that skin is really good. So we're going to sear these for about 8 to 10 minutes. We're going to get the skin nice and rendered and a little bit brown, and we're going to get some good fond on the bottom of the pot. All right, this is looking great. So this has been about 8 minutes, and we browned both sides. So we're going to turn off the heat, and then I'm just going to get this stuff out of here. That's gorgeous browning on the chicken. Beautiful, right? And even more gorgeous is the fond in the bottom of the pan, because fond is flavor. So they look really good, but you can't eat these yet. No, they're a little raw on the inside. <laughs> it's a huh? little bit raw, yeah. So this is all about getting flavor and getting the skin ready for the next phase. So we've got some really interesting vegetables going in here. We're going to start with fennel. So what I'm going to do is simply cut down the middle like this. And then it's got a core in the middle here. So I like to just make two cuts, one on this side, one on this side. And we'll just pop that right out. It's a lot like cutting like a cabbage core out. And then we're just going to go up and down, nice and thin. So I'm just going to put this back on the heat here, and we're going to add our beautiful fennel bulb, also adding in one thinly sliced leek. So we're going to cook this for about four minutes. As you can see, some of that fond is already coming off the bottom. All right, these look nice. A little mm. bit of browning, but they've definitely softened up a lot. OK, so we're going to go in with the rest of our aromatics. We've got four cloves of garlic that we minced up. Next up, we have a quarter teaspoon of saffron. The most expensive spice in the world. It's pretty expensive stuff. <laughs> so a quarter teaspoon going in here. I've also got a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. 
for some nice heat, and then a tablespoon of tomato paste. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's gonna add some flavor. It's also gonna help thicken it up a bit, but really what's gonna help thicken it is a tablespoon of all-purpose flour. So I'm gonna stir this in for about 30 seconds. All right, that smells and looks great. Now we're gonna build the base of our braise. So we have a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes that we drained of the liquid, a half cup of dry white wine, three cups of chicken broth, so we have this strip of orange zest. Now normally you'd see this in like an old fashioned or a kind of cocktail that you like, <laughs> but here it adds some really nice orange aroma to the stew. Next we have a quarter cup of pastis, which is a really interesting ingredient. It's kind of licorice-y and it works really well with the fennel. And finally, three quarters of a pound of Yukon Gold potatoes that we cut into three quarter inch pieces. So we just need to bring this up to a simmer. I'll reduce the heat to medium low. We'll go for about 10 minutes to par cook those potatoes. All right. So the potatoes have cooked for about 10 minutes at this point. They're definitely not done, but we've given them a jump start. We're also gonna give a jump start to the dark meat. So what we're gonna do is pop in our drumsticks and thighs. We want the skin to remain above the surface of the liquid. So we're gonna use those potatoes underneath as kind of a little structural support. We're just gonna rest the dark meat right on top of them. So we're gonna give the dark meat a head start of about five minutes of simmering, and then we'll be ready to add our white meat. Now it is time for our white meat to go in. Just trying to nestle on top of the potatoes as much as possible. So we're gonna let this sit for a second and turn our attention to the croutons. So we're gonna start with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now I have almost all of a baguette cut up here, but I saved about three inches from the end. We're gonna put that to use in a second. And then I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. I have a 375 degree oven preheated. So this is gonna go on the lower rack. It's gonna get nice and toasted on the bottom. And the chicken is gonna go on the middle rack. We're gonna cook this uncovered because we want that skin to stay nice and dry. And that's gonna take 10 to 20 minutes. So while our braise is cooking away in the oven, hands-free, we're gonna work on the final component of the dish, which is a rui. Mm, I love rui. What's really great about rui, especially for cooking at home, is it's much more foolproof than a regular mayonnaise. So I've got three tablespoons of water and another quarter teaspoon of saffron. And I actually bloom this in the microwave. So 10 to 20 seconds, get it nice and steaming, and it sits for about five minutes. So I'm gonna stir in four teaspoons of lemon juice, I saved about three inches of that baguette that we used for the croutons, and I took the crust off because that's not gonna soften very easily, and I just ripped the rest of it into roughly one inch pieces. So you want about a cup of these. And so that's gonna go into our mixture here. We're gonna let this sit for five minutes, and that bread's gonna soak up the liquid, and we can build our rui. So usually we tell you to bloom your spices in oil, but saffron is one of the few spices that's both water and oil soluble. The aroma of saffron is created by two compounds naturally present in the flour. One of the compounds, picrocrosin, is soluble in water, and the other, safranal, is soluble in oil. Let's make some rui. So our right. bread has soaked for about five minutes, and you can see that it's nice and soft. So I'm gonna use my whisk and kind of mash it up. We want this to be as smooth as possible. Okay, that looks great. So we're gonna add a few more ingredients. One is not that traditional, actually. We're gonna use some Dijon mustard, and this is two teaspoons. Next, we've got one egg yolk, and then we've got a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper and two cloves of minced garlic. So now I'm gonna mix this all together so we have a nice base to get our oil into. Next, I'm gonna make a nice little nest for our rui for whisking everything in. You want it to be a little bit smaller than the base of the bowl so it actually sits in there. We're gonna start with a half a cup of vegetable oil. So I just start whisking here and what you wanna do is have a nice steady stream. So I just look at right where it's coming out, that little tip right there, and I try and keep that stream thin but constant. Right, because if you add too much oil all at once, it won't make an emulsion. Okay, and that is all of our vegetable oil. So next I have a half cup of extra virgin olive oil. And you might think it's strange that we used even some vegetable oil. We found when you use all extra virgin olive oil and it's really good stuff, it has that peppery bite, it can be a little overpowering. So it's really important to look at how you're whisking. The side to side motion here is really good. We found that we got the best emulsions this way. And that is the last of the olive oil. That is a gorgeous rui, by the way. Beautiful, right? All right, so we're gonna set this aside. Our chicken is almost done. We can put everything together and dig in. Great. All right, it's been 15 minutes. It smells really good. Ooh, you can really smell the fennel. We're gonna take it over here and temp it. Would you mind grabbing those croutons for me and then also turning the oven to broil? You bet. All right, those croutons look great. We're looking for lower temperatures than we normally are because we're not done cooking the chicken at this point. So we're looking for 145 in the white meat, and that looks great, and 160 in the dark. So now we're gonna go back under that broiler and we're gonna go for five to 10 minutes. It's gonna get super crispy on top and finish cooking the chicken through. 
Perfect. So the broiler brought it right up to 160. And it did this other nice thing, crisped and brown all that skin. It's gorgeous. Doesn't that look beautiful? Okay, so we're gonna get our chicken out. And we're just gonna try and remove a little bit of fat from this. So we want some in there, it has a ton of flavor in it, but too much and it can be a little bit greasy. Now we're gonna add in a tablespoon of minced tarragon. As it oh. kind of hits the heat, you can really smell it, right? Yeah. You ready to eat? I am. So I'm gonna start with our nice brothy vegetables. So pretty. Maybe a little white and dark. A little bit of both. It's like I know you after all these years. <laughs> I'm gonna we take some of our rui, we just float those right in. And then finally, we're gonna do a little drizzle, about a tablespoon or so, all over there. This looks beautiful. Um, beautiful enough to eat. Yes. Oh, that's good. You get the fennel, a little bit of saffron. The skin is nice and crispy, which is really special in a braise. You know what I like about it is it is reminiscent of the traditional bouillabaisse with seafood, but it's a little bit heartier thanks to the chicken. That's right. And we haven't even talked about the Rui yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it, just enjoying the Rui. It is the star. It is so good. <laughs> Dan, this is delicious. Thank you. You're welcome. So to make bouillabaisse de poulet, start by browning the chicken in a Dutch oven. Add the classic flavors of fennel, orange, saffron, and pastis, and braise the chicken with the skin sitting above the surface of the liquid. Serve with an authentic Rui and some croutons, and you've got it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, a wonderful new recipe for chicken bouillabaisse. It is said that Nero burned Rome's entire supply in tribute to the wife he had murdered. And we sprinkle it on toast. It's ground cinnamon, and Jack's <laughs> going to tell us which brand is best. There will be no fire. No one will be hurt. These are rice puddings with a lot of cinnamon. You cannot actually taste cinnamon right from the jar. This is really about, does it matter where, and in this case, what country, your cinnamon comes from? I know a little bit about you. And I know you like that spicy Vietnamese cinnamon, so do I. It's got much more of the volatile oils. We did lab work on all the different brands that we tasted, and the Vietnamese had the most volatile oils. Four and a half to five and a half percent of the content was basically the flavor components. And a lot of them are, in addition to woodsy and floral, just heat. Most cinnamon that we get that's just labeled cinnamon comes from Indonesia. And so that has roughly two to three percent volatile oils, and so it has more of the floral notes, the woodsy notes, it has a little bit of spice, but it's more balanced. And then there's something called Ceylon cinnamon, which is really very unfamiliar to most Americans, and it doesn't have any heat whatsoever. It just has those floral notes, and it's delicious, but it seems, well, this isn't cinnamon. So you've got four samples here. Very that, happy about this tasting, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, it's rice pudding. As I said, we put extra cinnamon, probably more than you would want to use yes. if you were actually going to eat a full portion of these, <laughs> so that we could really taste the cinnamon. This is the easiest way to tell the differences. Once you start mm -hmm. baking with any of these cinnamons, the volatile oils are so volatile right. that they bake right off. And you get the woodsy notes and the floral notes, but those spicy notes disappear. So anything that you are immediately reacting to, gravitating to? This one has a fruitier taste. I'm getting actually, it tastes a little like cardamom. Okay. Which is very interesting to me. It's surprising how much flavor cinnamon has, especially in this application, because we're used to it probably mostly in baking. Right. It's got sort of a shadow of itself once you bake with it, but in this case, you can really taste how much flavor is in there. Yes. So you thought one of them was a little, you said, reminded you of cardamom. Mm -hmm. Now the other three? They're all actually really, really good in terms of rice pudding. This one, though, has the least amount of flavor to me. These two so far are my favorite, and with each bite, I'm changing my mind. And what's different about the two that you think are the best? You don't know. You're just going to keep I, going? I, you are I'm actually... really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this is so interesting, because I actually keep two different types of cinnamon on hand. And you keep two types on hand because? I like spicy, uh, Vietnamese spicy for things like curries. And then I have just a kind of a plain cinnamon that I keep on hand for baking and things like cinnamon toast, things right. like that. Okay. I think I like this one. It's definitely forward to me. I like that it tastes like cinnamon. The, this one is very nondescript. This one has a, a fruitier flavor. I really like a bold cinnamon. So I'm not as crazy about this. This is my first place. This is my second place. All right. But I notice you're still eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll put the spoon down. Back away from the rice pudding, Bridget, right? All right. We're going to see. Right how you did. 
I am very impressed. You picked the Vietnamese cinnamon. This is from Penzi's. This was our runner-up. Our tasters loved it. The people who really wanted a bold, mm -hmm. spicy cinnamon, people like you, yes. that put this at the top. Excellent. But it's a really great choice. It has the most volatile oils of any of the brands that we tasted. It's a very strong cinnamon. If you like cinnamon, that is the one. And you want to go with my runner-up? Uh, and this was the winner. Oh, this is great. Morton and Bassett. This is from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. It's an all-purpose cinnamon. It has a nice flavor. It isn't quite as strong as the one you chose, right. but it's delicious. It's really well balanced. Really Very well, well balanced. balanced. All right, let's go with Mr. Cardamom. I'm impressed. This is the Ceylon cinnamon, which has a totally different flavor. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it reminded you more of cardamom. Yep. It doesn't really taste like the cinnamon that we grew up with because right. it comes from a different species of the evergreen tree. Okay, and? This was the only one we did not fully love. It's Indonesian, but it's processed with soybean oil. Oh. And so it has a little, little bit of a duller flavor right. because the oil kind of mutes the flavor and you don't get quite as much cinnamon hit. Mm -hmm. It has a very low amount of volatile compounds in it. And so it is the only one we only recommended with reservations. I it's not see. bad cinnamon, right. but it's not great cinnamon. Right. Well, there you go for a great tasting cinnamon that's nice and forward, but still balanced. Go for our winner. It's the Morton and Bassett Spices Ground Cinnamon. It's $5.99 for 2.2 ounces. At its most basic, Avgo Limino is a broth-based soup, and it's thickened with a mixture of lemon juice and eggs. It's creamy. It's comforting especially with the addition of rice. Now, it's traditionally served as a starter, but Julie and I are gonna show you a much heartier version that's perfect as a main course. That's right, we're gonna bump up the amount of rice a little bit and add some chicken, so it's a bit heartier. All right, but it all comes down to one thing, the lemon. Mm -hmm. Because lemon is one of the major flavorings of the soup, and you can't just dump in a bunch of lemon juice and expect that floral flavor. You need some of the zest. In fact, we're gonna make 12 of these strips of zest, a lot of it. And when you're zesting, you just wanna make sure you just get that outer layer, that mm -hmm. outer zest. You don't want to get any of that white pith, because that white pith will make the soup taste very bitter, especially with this amount. So that's 12 of these total. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a little sachet of all these flavorings that go into the soup so we can just pluck it out and have a nice smooth soup without having to strain it too much. So I'm going to take the lemon zest, put it in the middle. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh dill. Mm. So these are two sprigs. I'm going to curl into a nice little center there. A little bit of coriander. This is two teaspoons of coriander seeds. And it has a lemony flavor as well. It sure does. That's a teaspoon of black peppercorns. Last but not least, one crushed garlic clove. So this is just an eight inch square piece of cheesecloth. I'm just gonna pick up the corners, a little bit of twine. All right, so now we're gonna put this sachet into eight cups of really good chicken broth. So you can check out our homemade chicken broth recipe on our website, americastestkitchen.com. This is one cup of long grain white rice. And I'm gonna bring this to a boil over high heat. Then once it's boiling, I'm gonna cover it, turn it down to low, and let it cook for just five minutes. So while this comes to a boil, I'm gonna work on our chicken. So this is one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken. Before we cook it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in half lengthwise, and I'm going to salt it. And also by cutting it in half, there's more surface area, better for the salt. It also means the chicken will cook through more quickly, and when we go to shred it, it'll already be in smaller sizes. Put them back in the bowl. And this is one and three quarters teaspoon of table salt. And you wanna let this sit for about 15 minutes or up to half an hour before we add it to the broth. All right, so this came to a boil, then we reduced it down to a simmer for just five minutes. Now the rice isn't fully cooked at this point, but this is when we're gonna add the chicken. And we're gonna add the chicken off the heat. And the chicken's gonna poach in the hot broth, but very gently. So if we kept it on the heat, it would be very vigorous. The chicken would cook unevenly. Mm. The outside would get dried out before the inside cooked through. Rubbery. Yeah, but off the heat, it poaches through nice and gently, stays good and tender. We're gonna cover this, and again, the heat's gonna stay off. We're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes. All right, so I'm just gonna take out this sachet. It's done its job. Take out the chicken. Now, I don't have to worry about temping it at this point because we're gonna shred it and add it back to the hot soup. So if it's all underdone, no worry. It'll heat back through and finish cooking in the soup. All right. Traditionally, this is the point at which you add the egg yolks and you do a liaison, which is a little of the hot broth, whisk in the yolks, add it back to the uh -huh. soup and finish it very quickly. And there's actually the Avgo Limono prayer, which is please don't break, please don't break, <laughs> please don't break. Because if you don't do it right, the eggs can curdle in the hot soup we found a better way. And it's using some of the cooked rice that's in the soup. So I'm just gonna measure out a cup of cooked rice. Now we're gonna take this rice, 
We're gonna add it to a blender, and to this we're gonna add six tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. It's the lemon -oh. That's right. <laughs> and so the eggs not only add richness, but they're a thickening power as well. But you know, it's the whites that actually taste eggy. So we're actually gonna use two eggs and two yolks, and by getting rid of two of the whites, a little less eggy tasting. So two large eggs, and then two large yolks. And now we're just gonna blend this up till it's nice and smooth, and that takes about a minute. All right, let's take a good look here. Ooh, you can see how creamy that is. Velvety. And now it's time to take our chicken and we're gonna shred it into bite-sized pieces that will fit on a soup spoon. Now when this is done shredding, I'm gonna put it back in the soup and bring it back to a boil before I add my special egg mixture. Well, it looks like you got a little bit of work. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about eggs and thickening. Now, eggs are a signature part of Avgo Lemino, but we needed a way to add them to our hot soup without scrambling those eggs. Sometimes we temper eggs by adding a small amount of hot liquid first, but tempering is not foolproof. You can still end up with curdled eggs. Here, we're skipping the tempering step and using rice instead. Rice contains a molecule called amylose, one of the two molecules that make up starch. When the amylose from the cooked rice mixes with the eggs, it isolates the egg proteins, making it much harder for the proteins to curdle. So that's what gives our soup a perfectly smooth texture. So I finished shredding that chicken and added it to the soup and brought it back to a simmer. And it's time to add our egg mixture. So I turned off the heat and I'm just gonna stir this right into the soup. And you don't have to be gentle. It can all go in at once. That's it, you don't have to temper it. You can just stir it right in. That's how you do it. Mm, and it's thickening as it's <sighs> heating. The eggs are starting to set. Finish it with a little fresh chopped dill. This is two teaspoons. And that is it. That looks beautiful. A one paw wonder. So I've got my bowl ready. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> oh, get that chicken and rice from the bottom. I love this recipe. So simple, so light, so easy. Creamy, lemony, but it's still light. It really is. This is velvety. I know. And it really is the perfect texture. Well, if you'd like to make our Avgo Lemino cut chicken breasts in half to speed up cooking and salt them to season, create a spice bundle with lemon zest, dill, and coriander seeds, and cook the bundle and rice in homemade chicken broth. Poach the chicken in the broth off the heat to keep it tender, then shred the chicken. Blend rice, lemon juice, and egg yolks until smooth, then stir it all into the hot broth. A little dill and lemon juice to finish, and it's perfect for dinner. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, a superb Greek chicken and rice soup with egg and lemon. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. It's my soup getting cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.